And we saw President Biden warning uh, that this is about a lot more than abortion. And he, he is saying that if this draft opinion becomes final, that more decisions could be affected. So let's bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein uh, for more on that part of this argument. Rick, activists are now pointing to same-sex marriage as one issue that could be next on the agenda for certain state legislatures to challenge uh, if this Supreme Court decision becomes final. How would a Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade affect that process? Diana, it would set a precedent for this court that says that precedents can go away. Roe v. Wade has been in place for 50 years. You heard several of the justices who appear to be in the majority on this opinion uh, at their confirmation hearings. They talked about Roe v. Wade as a precedent, even a super precedent of the court. The fact that they would overturn it and say because abortion isn't technically uh, mentioned in the Constitution that there's no right to an abortion, well, marriage and gay marriage, same-sex marriage, not mentioned either. And that's a ruling that you're talking about less than a decade old. You know, it's only about 10 years since Barack Obama changed his position on gay marriage, and we saw the earthquakes that, that followed. So the thinking goes that if this court is prepared to throw, throw out Roe v. Wade, it would be uh, prepared to throw out the Obergefell versus Hodges decision that established same-sex marriage, as well as maybe a, a, the, the right to privacy that, that established a, a right to contraceptive coverage in Griswold versus Connecticut back in the 60s. So there, there's lots of reasons to think that this might be the beginning of a, of a longer process if this five-member majority of the court, uh, with Justice Roberts potentially even in the minority, continues to get its way. And Rick, I appreciate you might not know the answer to this because there's a lot of you know legal aspects of this to unpack. But if and a big if, if that all were to happen, would that affect already established marriages that are in place right now, or the ability for future marriages? I find it very hard to imagine that you could you could actually go in and, and jeopardize a currently. Uh, consecrated marriage that has been uh, that has been signed off by the state that would be a very aggressive challenge. Uh, usually, you can't go back in a, in, a, in an after the fact way to to change a law in that way. Uh, but we did see a lot of confusion along those lines. If you remember, before the Supreme Court decision, you had states and even just some cities starting to perform gay marriages. There were questions that were raised at the time about how other states would recognize those unions. You can imagine a situation like that if a state just were to to, to decree that it doesn't recognize another state's marriage, that if a, if a gay couple that had gotten married, say, in California, wants to retire to Oklahoma or move for a job to Texas, that you could see some hostility to even accepting that and allowing the rights and benefits of marriage to attend to it. All of this is hypotheticals, but I think uh, we're seeing, I think, a real political effort to try to, to say that this is, uh, this is a bigger danger to freedoms than might even meet the eye, and it's a big one uh, just off the bat. Now, President Biden is facing some backlash, though, for his comments calling the MAGA crowd the most extreme political group in recent American history. Some conservatives are now comparing that to Hillary Clinton's basket of deplorables remark in 2016. Is this a strategic shift in tone ahead of the midterms, and do you think it could backfire? No question. And look, President Biden, this White House, they have tread carefully when talking about uh, former President Trump and his supporters. In fact, uh, it's almost it's very rare that they even say his name. They talk about my predecessor, the previous administration. So for for, for Biden to put in his remarks yesterday, this MAGA crowd language that we uh, that we're starting to hear, I think that is a, a, a major strategic shift to try to frame up what it means to be uh, Trumpist and, and Trumpian and a Trump follower. In the primaries that are playing out right now, you're seeing a range of Trump followers uh, start start to win. And you heard him make an economic argument yesterday that they, they favor the rich, as well as a moral argument about the policies they might, they might support. All right. Rick Klein, our political director, always great to have your analysis. Rick, thank you. Thanks, Diane. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.